Honorable Speaker and Respected House. Honorable Speaker, sir, interstate border conflicts of North region has impeded the overall development of the region. This motion proposed today in this today's house can be interpreted from different three different perspectives. Number one, interstate border conflicts has, has really impeded the development of northeastern region, which the members of today's treasury that is we are supporting. Number two, interstate border conflicts has nothing to do which has no relation with the development of the region, which stands completely absurd. And number three, honorable speaker, sir, interstate border conflicts is flourishing and developing the northeastern region, which the members sitting in today's opposition bench are trying to support. And hence, honorable speaker, sir, I may like to I would like to question the members sitting in today's opposition bench as how can we say that a conflict which has cost more than 150 lives over the past decade can bring development, can bring flourishment. Honorable speakers of the members sitting in today's opposition bench have mentioned that there are various numerous problems. We also agree that there are numerous other problems. We are not saying that the border, inter interstate border dispute is the main reason of all these problems. What we are saying is that interstate border dispute is one of the many vital problems for which the state, which the region of Northeast is under development. And hence analyzing this whole proposed bill from the perspective of number one, cooperative federalism, number two, cultural assimilation, and number three, intolerance. I think my stand with the motion today. Honorable speakers are talking about cooperative federalism. The concept of development of modern India lies with the term cooperative federalism, which simply means that in the need of one state, the adjoining and the neighboring states will be helping them out for a cumulative development. And the, the union government has been promoting this concept since the very last decade. But only and only because of this because of this interstate border disputes, this has not been possible. Only and only because of the interstate border tension prevailing, the central government has been able to penetrate again and again in the state related matters and which has been able to execute its pro execute its pro process of resource extraction from the regions of Northeast India, leaving the states of Northeast India underdeveloped and nothing else. Moving on, honorable speakers are talking about cultural assimilation. If you look at the regions of Northeast India, we can call it as mini India, which is diverse diversified, varying linguistic, tradition, cultural and practices. Now, whenever speakers had all this culture been assimilated, we would have an unrestrained flow of trade boosting the economy. Had all this culture been unified, we would have got an asset which would have been executed as an international asset of revenue collection. But honorable speakers are only and only because of the prevailing border tensions, what we have found to see is that cultural dissimulation has been occurring as a result of which the development that Northeast region should have been getting is not being able to execute. And hence, honorable speakers, sir, I again would like to say that we are standing for a motion on this cause. Last but not the least, honorable speakers are talking about intolerance. Let me remind this house today about the bloodsheds, about the numerous bloodsheds that the regions of Northeast India has been facing. Let me remind this house today about the dark nights of military empowerment, military enforcement that the states of Northeast have been facing. Let me remind this house today about Thangza Manoama, the indigenous woman from Manipur, was the 17 times in her genitals by the military. Honorable speakers, all this have been possible because of the intolerant conditions of the Northeast regions, because of the insurgencies and the militant groups. But if we peculiarly look at the part of the such insurgencies and militant groups, the root cause is because of interstate border conflicts, the root cause is because of inter because of extension of boundaries, the root cause of such things is because of the rights of sovereign rights and extended boundaries. So this makes it crystal clear, honorable speakers, are that only and only because of this such border tensions and such uh, prevailing border tensions, the the part of such insurgencies and the part of such militant groups has been possible. And hence, honorable speakers, how can you expect development in such reasons where there has been military enforcement from age old, from, by years after years, there has been military enforcement in such areas. Hence, I would like to appeal to members sitting in both the houses to come up, to stand for their community, to speak for their community, to speak for their region, for the better sake of the people of Northeast India, for the better sake of the people of this country. Thank you, honorable speakers. Thank you, respected house. Thank you.